So in this video, we're going to be learning all about controllers. So controllers essentially allow us to control the flow of data in our application. So let's go and get started. Let's see how we make controllers. So the first thing we're going to do is, you know, we created our module in a previous video and we named it Angular Module Tutorial Control. Well, I want to actually make that a bit more specific and name that Tutorial Control Module. And because I changed that name, as you probably guessed, I need to go back to my app.js and now state, you know, it's no longer dependent on tutorial control. That doesn't exist. It's now dependent on tutorial control module. Great. The one thing we forgot to do in the previous video was we actually had to link in our module. So whenever we create a uh, modules, we, of course, have to link it in. So let's do that real quick. Script source. All right. Let's say JS controllers. And then we are going to say it is and this is why I love WebStorm. Cool. So now WebStorm is saying I do see that you have that controller. Great. So now let's actually learn about controllers. So how do we create them? Well, as we've stated before, the preferred way to do it is to chain it, right? So we don't do that variable. We just say dot controller. And then the first parameter is going to be the name of our controller. What are we naming our controller? Well, I want to name this tutorial control because I think that makes the most sense. So actually, I'm going to make it a capital. So tutorial control and now our second parameter is actually going to be an array so the reason we do it like this is because uh, well let's just write it and then I'll uh, tell you about it afterwards so we're gonna say scope and then we're going to say function and we are going to pass in our scope so I would say 99% of our you know controllers are gonna look like this what we're doing is we are essentially saying, okay, rather, let me just finish this real quick. So there we go. Great. So what we're doing here is this. We're passing in our scope, which is essentially, our scope is the data of our application. The scope, whatever our controller is controlling, our scope holds the data for it. So we're always going to want to pass in the scope. This is how we get our data in and out. So this array syntax might look a little bit strange. All it's saying is this scope parameter right here. The reason why we name it is when we run minimification algorithms on it, it replaces the name with a letter and this can actually be very hard to debug. So the preferred way of doing it is doing it just like this. You punch in the name of whatever parameter you're putting in. So say if I were to, you know, pass in another parameter named Thomas, I would want to then add Thomas here, if that makes sense. So, you know, general rule of thumb, whenever you pass in a new parameter, make sure you name it beforehand. Great. So, as I've said, you know, our first argument or parameter is our name of our controller. Our second argument or parameter is our actual scope. And then inside of our controller, this is where, you know, our programming work is done. You know, we could then go on to define, you know, variables by doing just like this. You know, if I had it, I would say scope, you know, and then the name of the variable I want to create, let's say name, and then, you know, maybe my name, Thomas. Great, so now we know how to create controllers. How do we actually link them in to our view? Well, the way we do that is by using our ng-controller directive. Wherever we place our ng-controller directive is we, we attach it to a particular DOM element and that, that DOM element or that controller will control everything inside that DOM element. So if I want to you know, control everything inside the body, I would say ng-controller and then what we just named it, tutorial control. Now, anything in the body, our tutorial control will now have access through using the scope. So we could also have multiple controllers in a page. And the way we do that is, as you probably guessed, we just define multiple ng controllers. So let's say, you know, I have a div tag in here. And I have, you know, a, let's say, ul and a couple of li tags. All right. Or I'll just do one. So... You know, let's say my tutorial control, I wanted to control these divs. So I would say ng controller, tutorial control. Okay. Now ng controller is going to be able to control the scope of ng controller, or rather, I should say, is going to be able to control anything in these divs. So whatever I put in there, ng controller here is going to be able to, you know, do programming work for it. Now, if I were to want to control anything in a UL tag, I would say ng controller, UL control, let's say. And now if I were to define another controller, it would be able to define anything in these UL tags, right? Pretty cool. So what we've just gone over is how do we create a new controller, how we attach our new controller, and the fact that we could have multiple controllers in our, you know, our view. So 
Hopefully that all made sense to you guys, and I will see you in the next video.